So hello everyone. Am I clearly visible, audible? Give me a thumbs up in the chat box. Let me confirm if I'm visible. I will start the class ahead. Just let me confirm it. Just give me a second. I will start the class. Give me a second. So yes, I hope it is working. And uh, so I am Dr. Priyanka Sajdev here. I'm welcoming you all for this session also. And this is a session for second prof university exam crash course for pathology. We have started neoplasia, right? So I'm continuing here neoplasia. Uh, this is episode two for neoplasia. In the last lecture, we have seen the definition of the neoplasia. We have seen the nomenclature. We have seen the components. We have seen the differences. We have started the differences between benign and my uh, benign and malignant tumors. So I will continue the lecture here. So that is the thing. So before that, there are few announcements for you people that uh, you already know on academy we have two types of paid subscription one is plus subscription one is iconic subscription in plus subscription we, uh, you get access to live and recorded lectures of an academy from india's top educators you can also compete with other learners in live test and quizzes you can also get the notes the printed notes also and you can download the soft copy also and you will get to access to a question bank curated by the top educators which contains more than 25000 question specially curated for you people and if you solve all these 25000 question you practice these question along with watching the live and recorded lectures your selection in any exam is guaranteed that is my words that, that is the thing that is about plus subscription in iconic subscription along with all the features which i have enumerated in plus subscription you will get an additional feature that you will get access to prep letter recorded lectures also so if you are thinking of taking a paid subscription better to go with iconic because in iconic there are all the features of plus but additional feature of prep letter recorded lecture is there in iconic and the price difference between plus and iconic is little bit a very less you can notice it here so what you can do you can go to an academy learners app go to the need pg category you see for the subscription you can see uh, the plus uh, you can see you, you want to select the subscription whether you want plus or iconic you can select the duration of your subscription for how many months you want the subscription you can see you can check the prices of various subscription you can notice one thing here longer the plan longer the subscription cheaper it is so if you are a first prof second prof rather pre final year student also you should take a longer plan it will be more cost effective for you people but if you are a final year student you are an intern you can take as small as six month plan also it's your wish right so the exciting offer here is that if you apply my code such dev can on any of these plan you will get straightforward 10 percent discount on the existing prices so don't miss out this opportunity please see notice the code it is such dev tan s a c h d e v such dev tan is the code here have you got it that is the thing so let me start with neoplasia let me continue with neoplasia in pathology general pathology we have started in neoplasia you already know the definition i have discussed in the last lecture you already know the components that we have discussed the parenchymal and stomal component we know the nomenclature of benign tumors the suffix is oma and we know the nomenclature of malignant tumor the suffix is either sarcoma or carcinoma you know the special categories you know what is teratoma what is blastoma what is hamartoma what is choreostoma we have done two marks short note on each of them after that, we have started the characteristics feature of uh, neoplasia, which differentiate benign and malignant. So give me a second. Let me jump on the slide directly where we have left so that I continue the lecture from that slide only without wasting time. Okay. So I was teaching you the characteristics of the tumor. So here I am. Okay. The characteristics of the tumor. We have discussed based on the rate of growth, benign tumors are slow. That's why doubling time is high. And malignant tumors are fast growing. That's why doubling time is less. So if you talk about doubling time, it is it is more for benign tumors and doubling time is less for malignant tumors that we have studied. Clinical features we have seen benign tumors are asymptomatic. Malignant tumors ulcerate, they invade, they produce symptoms usually. Grossly we have seen benign tumors are spherical, they are capsulated and they compress the surrounding tissue. And malignant tumors we have seen uh, they are they are irregular in shape. They invade the surrounding tissue that we have seen coming on the microscopy. I was teaching you microscopy. In microscopy, there are two terms. The lack of anaplasia is the presence of anaplasia. The lack of differentiation is the presence of anaplasia. Differentiation jayega, tohi anaplasia aayega. Anaplasia is the lack of differentiation that you have to understand. So what is differentiation? 
differentiation i have told you just suppose this is any tissue any tissue of the body just suppose it is a skin it is a esophagus any tissue so these are the normal cells can you see this is a normal cell this is a normal cell but in between these are the tumor cells these are the tumor cells a cluster of tumor is arising in a normal tissue it was normal completely initially but now a cluster of tumor cells is arising in a normal tissue you have to see the resemblance of this tumor cell with the normal cell so this is cancer cell tumor cell b you have to see the resemblance of this tumor or cancer cell with normal cell you have to compare that resemblance how much it is resembling the resemblance the percentage of resemblance is known as differentiation so differentiation if the resemblance is more it is known as well differentiated if resemblance gradually decreases it is moderately differentiated poorly differentiated and it is completely different no resemblance at all it is undifferentiated so based on differentiation we can classify the tumor whether they are well differentiated moderately differentiated poorly differentiated or undifferentiated based on differentiation this is the classification of the tumor which defines the prognosis of the tumor so well differentiated tumors are good prognosis and undifferentiated tumors have poor prognosis that is the thing have you got it so what is anaplasia anaplasia is the lack of differentiation if differentiation is lost that is tumor become poorly differentiated or undifferentiated it is known as anaplasia it is the hallmark of malignancy it is the hallmark of malign malignancy most of the benign tumors are well differentiated and malignant tumors are poorly or undifferentiated that is the thing have you got it so anaplasia there are 10 features of anaplasia you can see see these are the 10 features which differentiate benign tumor from malignant so there are 10 differences between benign and malignant tumor microscopically so let me explain you just give me a second give me a thumbs up in the chat box whether i can see your chat yes or no let me check give me a thumbs up in the chat box someone from the audience i want to check whether i can see your chat yes or no give me a thumbs up but okay 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 so these are the 10 features i will discuss them one by one see just suppose just suppose i'm a pathologist and any tumor is coming to my lab so you are a surgeon you have cut okay you have cut a tumor from a patient okay let me take an example she is a female she is a patient she is your patient you are a surgeon imagine the situation and she is having a breast tumor she is having a breast lump rather i must say she is having a breast lump lump in the breast just suppose she is having breast in the left 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 breast so you are a surgeon what you have done the patient is in front of you so you have you have consulted the patient and asked the patient to get it operated the patient is ready you have done the surgery for the patient so you have cut the tumor you have cut this tumor and send it to me send it to the pathology pathology laboratory so here is the laboratory here is the specimen this is the specimen this is my specimen now it is a specimen it is known as specimen so you have sent the specimen you have to send the specimen in a container which contains formalin 10% buffered formalin. 10% neutral buffer formalin. Nahi bhejna hai. This is known as fixative. If you if you if you send the specimen as it is, you cut it, it will become air dry. All the cells will be dead. And while reaching the laboratory, pathologists cannot say whether it is benign or malignant because all the cells are dead. All the cells are dead. So to fix it, to fix it, when it is coming out of the human body, you have to fix at that stage only. It is known as fixation, fixative. You have to use a fixative for it. The fixative is 10% neutral buffered formula and it is asked in the viva. So you have to take a container, ask the relatives of the patient to bring a big bucket depending on the size or a small container. So they will, they will bring a fresh container from the market. You are a surgeon, you have done the operation, you have done the surgery. Take the specimen out of the human body and keep it in that container. Fill the container with 10% neutral buffered formula. It is available in all OT, right? It is available in the hospital, in the OT. And send it to the laboratory. Send it to the histopathological laboratory. Now, in the laboratory, there is a pathologist. So, pathologist will take the specimen out. The pathologist will see the, take the specimen out. See the specimen first grossly and see where is the exact tumor. The exact tumor is here, 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 where it is. The pathologist will take the size in centimeter. In centimeter, what is the size? Of this tumor and cut the tumor and make a slide of it make a slide of it now there are two possibilities the tumor can be benign the tumor can be malignant that pathologist will decide now based on the slide based on the histological features so pathologists will see these 10 features so path under microscope we have to see now see the two tumors are in front of you so these will be the features of benign tumor these will be the features of malignant tumor so you have to see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten these 10 features will decide whether it is benign or whether it is malignant. So let me explain each feature to you. See, see on the benign side. See, you can see the cell. This is a cell. This is a cell. Inside the cell, can you see the nucleus? The blue color is the nucleus. So nucleus is towards the base. Okay, let me draw it. So these are the cells. 
these are the cells nucleus is not in the center nucleus is towards the base this is in benign tumor that is basal polarity basal polarity so basal polarity polarity means a pole pole north pole south pole so nucleus is towards a pole nucleus is not in the center so base nucleus is towards the base base this is baseline no okay understand it this is baseline this is baseline so nucleus is towards the base it is known as basal polarity basal polarity presence is a feature of benign benign tumor and absence is a feature of malignant so see now see the two diagrams you yourself see the two diagram and decide see see these cells and see these cells see this cell and this cell this is benign as i have told you and this is malignant as i have told you now see the the position of the nucleus in each of them the position of the nucleus here is towards the base towards the base towards the base that is basal polarity is present here and there the nucleus is in the center it is upwards it is downwards anywhere so basal polarity is lost so basal polarity presence is a feature of benign tumor and absence is a feature of malignant tumor give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up first everyone give me a thumbs up done so have you got it that is the first feature that is the first feature which differentiate a benign tumor from a malignant tumor that is basal polarity basal polarity presence like a loss i am teaching you features of anaplasia that is malignancy that is loss of polarity is a feature of malignancy second is pleomorphism what do you mean by pleomorphism pleomorphism is variation in shape and size see all the cells here okay here all the cells are of same size same size all the cells are of same size if you see grossly they are same here some cells are large some are small some are very large some are medium so that is pleomorphism is absent in 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 uh, in benign tumors and pleomorphism is present in malignant tumors basal polarity ulta hai basal polarity is present in benign absent in malignant but pleomorphism is absent in benign and present in malignant the meaning of the pleomorphism is variation in shape and size give me a thumbs up so pleomorphism pleomorphism is absent in benign and present in malignant basal polarity was present in benign and absent in malignant give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up have you got it so third is nc ratio nucleus cytoplasmic ratio nc ratio nc ratio nc ka full form hai nucleus cytoplasmic ratio so see in benign tumors compare the size can you see the size of the nucleus le lo or size of the cytoplasm le lo size of the nucleus le lo size of the cytoplasm so nucleus is small and cytoplasm is big right and see here see here nucleus le lo and cytoplasm le lo so nucleus is big cytoplasm is less so in malignant tumor and nucleus is increasing in size relatively so numerator is increasing so nc ratio will increase nc ratio will increase so here nc ratio is less you can say in benign tumors and nc ratio is more in malignancy that is the third feature nc ratio basal polarity ho gaya pleomorphism ho gaya nc ratio is less in benign and more in malignant so that is how you have to differentiate benign and malignant the first feature was basal polarity which was present in basal uh, benign and absent in malignant the second was pleomorphism which was absent in benign and present in malignant the third is nc ratio which is less in benign and more in malignant give me a thumbs up the fourth one the fourth one is n isonucleosis now split the term n matlab no iso matlab equal nucleosis means nucleus ka size so see the nucleus ka size nucleus ka size in each of them let me show you see the nucleus ka size here all the nucleus are same size nucleus ka size same hai lekin see here it is a big nucleus it is a medium nucleus it is a small nucleus so nucleus ka size same nahi hai to so, n matlab no iso matlab equal no equal nucleus size nucleosis so n isonucleosis is a feature of malignancy it is present in malignant tumor or n isonucleosis is absent in benign because here nucleus are of same so here isonucleosis hai wahan pe n isonucleosis hai you can say like this here it is isonucleosis wahan pe n isonucleosis hai give me a thumbs up so that is the iso and n isonucleosis next is hyperchromatism hyperchromatism now hyperchroma chroma ka matlab hota hai uh, color chroma ka matlab hota hai color color now see the color of the nucleus here here all of them are light color and here they become more and more compact and dark, dark color so hyperchromatism chromatism hyper matlab more chroma matlab color it is a feature of malignancy it is not a feature of benign that is hyperchromatism the next feature i'm sorry just a second the next feature is nucleus nucleus ke andar nucleoli nucleoli see the nucleoli here 
I will show you. Here there is no nucleola inside the nucleus. But here you can see all the nucleus have a certain dots inside it. Multiple dots. That is nucleoli. So nuclear features are there. Nuclear. So basal polarity, pleomorphism, NC ratio, nucleus the size, nucleus ka color, nucleus ke andar nucleoli. Right? So what is the next feature? Next is mitosis. Mitosis is absent in, absent in benign and present in malignant. Giant cells are also absent in benign and present in malignant. Out of the 10, uh, ten these 8 are important. You can see here, in this diagram, there is no mitosis. Let me show you a few mitosis here. You can see this, this spindle formation. Please appreciate I am marking with green color. It is spindle formation. So mitosis is a feature of malignancy. See the giant cell, multiple nucleus. Giant cell is a feature of malignancy. So let me enumerate. So benign, who will help me in enumerating? Benign tumor, malignant tumor. Tell me the features. Tell me the features. How you will differentiate benign tumor from a malignant tumor? Tell me based on polarity, basal polarity. Basal polarity kis mein hoti hai, kis mein nahi hoti hai. The first feature is basal polarity. Uske basis pe batao. The second, you tell me based on pleomorphism. Pleomorphism is variation in shape and size. Kis mein hota hai, kis mein nahi hota hai. The third is NC ratio, kis mein kam hai, kis mein zada hai. Wo batao. The fourth is, uh, nucleosis and isonucleosis or isonucleosis and isonucleosis ki basis pe batao. Nucleus ka uh, size, hyperchromasm, nucleus ka color, nucleus ke andar nucleoli, 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 is ki basis pe batao. And the next is mitosis, kis mein hota hai, kis mein nahi hota hai, giant cells kis mein hota hai, kis mein nahi hota hai. Tell me, who will help me? Give me a thumbs up if you can see me, if you can hear me. So basal polarity is, is present in benign tumor. It is lost in malignant tumor. Pleomorphism is absent in benign tumor. It is a feature of malignant tumor. NC ratio is less in benign tumor. It is more in malignant tumor. Anisonucleosis is not a feature of benign tumor. It is a feature of malignant tumor. Hyperchromasm is also a feature of malignant tumor. Nucleoli are also present in malignant tumor. Mitosis also present in malignant tumor. Giant cells also present in malignant tumor. So this is how you have to differentiate benign tumor from malignant tumor. Give me a thumbs up. And you have to draw this diagram along with writing this. You can explain one by one like this. Like this I have explained. In the theory you can read the theory. So what is loss of polarity? What is pleomorphism? Give me a thumbs up. So what is NC ratio? What is anisonucleosis? What is hyperchromasm? What is nuclear change? Mitosis? Giant cells? So you have to explain each of them. <coughs> you can see the two diagrams are in front of you. Give me a thumbs up. Swati, Pooja, Maitri. Those who are listening, please give me a thumbs up. So I will. I would like to know whether it is visible or not. And whether I can see your chats, yes or no. Just a second. Give me a second. Okay. So yes, I can see it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So you can see the two tumors are in front of you. Listen, the two tumors. Both of them are in uterus. See, there are two females. This is female A. And this is female B. This is female A. This is female B. Both of them are in front of you. Both of them have tumor in the uterus. So these are the multiple tumors in the uterus. You have, you are a surgeon. You have picked them out. You have, you have done the surgery. And this is a tumor. <coughs> this is a tumor in the uterus. You have, you have done the surgery. So you have sent both the specimen to the, to the lab in the pathologist. Pathologist cut this also and make a slide. Pathologist cut this also and make a slide. So this is a slide of patient A, this is a slide of patient B. Both of them are tumor in the uterus. Now see all the 10 features that is basal polarity, pleomorphism, anisonucleosis, hyperchromatism, NC ratio. Here are all the benign ki taraf fit ho rahe aur yahan pe sare ke sare malignant ki taraf fit ho rahe See, please appreciate this giant cell. Can you see this is a giant cell, this is a feature of malignancy, right? Please appreciate this mitosis. Can you see the spindles? So mitosis is a feature of malignancy. Please appreciate the color of the nucleus hyperchromatism. Please appreciate anisonucleosis. So all the features are towards malignancy. So here I will form the report. In the report I will say this patient have a benign tumor in the uterus that is leomyoma. Oma, oma. And this patient have a malignant tumor in the uterus that is leomyosarcoma. So this is a diagram of leomyoma of the uterus. And this is a diagram of leomyosarcoma. See the suffix oma sarcoma of the tumor. So it is the job of the pathologist to decide. So this female only surgery was the treatment and she is free now. Surgery ho gai, treatment khatam. This female after surgery she has to take chemo also radio. Also. She is having a malignant tumor. So she is having always a risk of having recurrence, metastasis. That is the thing. Give me a thumbs up. So that is how we decide. So these are the real slides. Can you see? Appreciate a mitosis here in this side. Can you appreciate the spindle formation? This is mitosis. <clears throat> This is and see other features also in the slide. And this feature, please appreciate this as a giant cell. 
this is a giant cell this is a giant cell so it is a malignant so see the various mitosis this is a mitosis 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 all the cells are showing spindles they are showing mitosis they are showing the spindle cells and so mitosis aise dikhte hain can you see so again this cell is showing mitosis this is showing anisonucleosis so hyperchromatism mitosis anisonucleosis increase and see ratio prominent nuclei pleomorphism almost all 10 features are present in this slide so it is a malignant tumor it is a malignant tumor see this is a giant cell this is a giant cell so that is the thing that is the thing have you got it have you got it have you got it give me a thumbs up yes or no give me a thumbs up yes or no give me a thumbs up now listen the next uh, uh the next thing following now you the next question comes is you have to differentiate the following three things metaplasia dysplasia and anaplasia metaplasia dysplasia anaplasia the next question in your exam frequently asked in your university exam write the differences between metaplasia dysplasia and anaplasia how you differentiate the three metaplasia kya hota hai dysplasia kya hota hai anaplasia kya hota hai anaplasia maine bata diya these 10 features All these ten features and it is irreversible. It is reversible. Dysplasia में भी यही ten features होंगे, लेकिन वो reversible होंगे. Metaplasia मैंने बताया है आपको adaptations में. Cellular adaptations are of five types ना. Hypertrophy, hyperplasia, aplasia, um, a yes, hypertrophy, hyperplasia, atrophy, uh, metaplasia and dysplasia. So metaplasia is a type of cellular adaptation. जिसमें वन टाइप ऑफ सेल गॉट कन्वर्टेड इनटू अनदर टाइप ऑफ सेल दैट इज कॉमस आइदर कन्वर्टेड इनटू कॉलमनर और कॉलमनराइज सो तीनों टर्म्स आर रिलेटेड द थ्री टर्म्स आर रिलेटेड यू नो मेटाप्लेशिया का डेफिनेशन है वन टाइप ऑफ सेल लीनियर सेल्स इनटू अनदर लीनियर स्क्वामस टू कॉलमनर और कॉलमनर टू स्क्वामस एंड इट इज रिवर्सिबल डिस्प्लेशिया इज डिसऑर्डर्ड डिफरेंशिएशन इट इज आल्सो रिवर्सिबल बट एनाप्लेशिया इज लैक ऑफ डिफरेंशिएशन इट इज इररिवर्सिबल हैव यू गॉट इट सो सी सी दिस इज दिस इज जस्ट सपोज अ एंडोसर्विक्स ऑफ अ फीमेल endocervix of a female so first thing it is the columnar lining normal lining is columnar from columnar is, it is getting converted to squamous it is getting converted to squamous so this is metaplasia so sabse pehle kya hua metaplasia metaplasia ke baad the cells become disorganized ye upar se hona shuru hue so it is dysplasia it is dysplasia dysplasia full thickness mein ho gayi so it is carcinoma in situ now it is known as anaplasia once the cell will come out and it will get converted into carcinoma so first takes place is metaplasia then dysplasia then anaplasia the first two are reversible the third is irreversible have you got it have you got it so this is how this is how metaplasia is reversible dysplasia is also reversible but anaplasia is irreversible that you have to learn and all these features high nc ratio hyperchromatism mitosis fever giant cells necrosis pleomorphism ये सब डिस्प्लेशिया में भी होते हैं एनाप्लेशिया में भी होते हैं द ओनली डिफरेंस विच डिफरेंशियट डिस्प्लेशिया फ्रॉम एनाप्लेशिया इज द रिवर्सिबिलिटी एंड इिवर्सिबिलिटी गिव मी थम्स अप इफ यू गॉट इट गिव मी थम्स अप इफ यू गॉट इट डिस्प्लेशिया इज बिनाइन कंडीशन बट एनाप्लेशिया इज मेलेग्नेंसी डिस्प्लेशिया प्री मेलेग्नेंट है वो आगे जाके मेलेग्नेंसी में कन्वर्ट होगा लेकिन एनाप्लेशिया तो इट्स सेल्फ इज मेलेग्नेंसी गिव मी अ थम्स अप गिव मी अ थम्स अप बिकॉज इज सेइंग YouTube क्लास डजंट ओपन इन एन एकेडमी ऐप because youtube class will open on youtube only on an academy special classes will open so there is a separate link for youtube classes and an academy classes an academy special classes are free like youtube but yeah the link is different if you try the link of youtube to open in an academy app it will not open youtube link open will youtube channel so an academy have a youtube channel that is future doctors so currently this lecture is on future doctors so it is a free channel you can watch the YouTube lectures on YouTube and uh, special class lectures on an academy app. So there is a separate link for the both. It is not the same link which can open both. Have you got it? Because so some my some of my lectures are on YouTube that is free and some of my lectures are on an academy special classes that is also free. So that is the distribution we give. So students can learn on YouTube also and some of the lectures on the special class also. Anyways, so we are done with rate of growth, clinical features, gross microscopy. The ten features which differentiate benign from malignant. That is the definition of anaplasia. Now in your exam, differences can come, microscopic features can come, and definition of anaplasia can come. Anaplasia ki definition bhi aati hai, so you have to write these ten features. That these ten features along with reverse. If these ten features with reversibility, it is known as dysplasia. With these ten ten features with irreversibility, it is known as anaplasia. So exam में dysplasia है या anaplasia है you have you have to write these ten features कहाँ गए ये वाले just a second so these ten features that is the definition of dysplasia also metaplasia also dysplasia में भी आपको यही ten features मिलेंगे लेकिन वो reversible है anaplasia में भी यही ten features मिलेंगे लेकिन irreversible है तो exam में dysplasia पूछा या anaplasia पूछा write down these ten features give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up should I proceed ahead 
So this is how you have to write the differences. Every one see here. Every one. Benign tumors, malignant tumors. The table is from Robbins. See here. Every one. Benign tumors, malignant tumors. First differentiate on the basis of growth rate. Con slow hote hai, con fast hote hai. Then differentiate on the basis of clinical features. Clinical features mein kaun asymptomatic hai, kaun symptomatic hai. Then differentiate on the basis of gross. Kaun circular hai, kaun irregular hai. Kaun invade kar raha hai, kaun compress kar raha hai. Then differentiate on the 10 features of the microscopy. In dono pe mein baad mein aati hu. Prognosis invasion. Ye wala table mein baad mein continue karoongi. Mujhe ek aur point samjhana hai. Ye baad mein dikhenge. Pahle itna table dikhte hai. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Should I read the table? Growth rate ke basis pe benign are slow, malignant are rapidly growing. Benign are slow growing, malignant are rapidly growing. You know what is doubling time. Clinical features ke basis pe, uh, clinical features ke basis pe, these are usually asymptomatic, benign, but malignant are symptomatic. Grossly, they are capsulated and well circumscribed. They are circular. They compress the tissue and malignant one are poorly circumscribed. They are they are not capsulated, they are irregular in shape and they invade the surrounding tissue. That is the difference based on gross and clinical features. Microscopic 10 features I have already explained you. Basal polarity, pleomorphism, NC ratio, anisonucleosis, hyperchromatism, mitosis, giant cell. So you have to write what all about benign, what all about malignant along with the diagram which I have told you. So diagram bhi pe banana hai. So this is how this question comes for 3 marks or 5 marks. Either 3 marks mein aate hai, differences or kabhi kabhi 5 marks mein bhi rarely ye log pooch lete hai in your university exam. Write the differences between benign and malignant. So, aapko man se nahi likhna hai. You have to write the differences like this, like this. So, benign tumor, malignant tumor. How you will differentiate? So, first tell me based on, first tell me based on growth rate. Growth rate ki basis pe kya differences hai? Then tell me based on clinical features kya differences hai? Then tell me based on gross. क्या differences हैं? Then tell me सबसे main है based on microscopy क्या differences हैं? Microscopy में there are 10 points. For all 10 points you should enumerate along with the diagram. Diagram showing here the differences. अगर तुम्हें पूरा नहीं लिखना है, if it is coming for 2 marks, write only microscopic differences. Don't write other. Microscopic are the most important differences which differentiate gross, uh, which differentiate benign and malignant. ये सब भी differentiate करेंगे, but these are the rough criteria. The most important criteria is microscopic feature. Give me a thumbs up. Pooja, Ashwaji, have you got it? Give me a thumbs up. Have you got it? So this is how you have to differentiate. You have to learn the difference table. You have to learn. This is from some other book. You have to learn this table. Learn this table. So growth rate, invasiveness, these are the features. You know, mitosis, cell shape, cell size, NC ratio, like polarity, chromatin, hyperchromatism. So all of the terminologies, and you have to learn that. You have to learn that. I would like to learn some polls here. Before coming to the next topic that is invasion and metastasis, that is the biggest and most important topic. I can guarantee in your exam, there will be a short note on metastasis. Either 2 mark or 3 mark or 5 mark. Metastasis is that way important. You cannot pass your second prop without studying the steps of metastasis. I will come on metastasis later on. Before that, I would like to learn some MCQs in the form of the polls based on this topic. Okay, based on the differences between benign and malignant. So, this is the question in front of you. You can write your answer in the chat box, but fast, but fast. What is lack of differentiation is known as? Lack of differentiation is known as anaplasia or dysplasia or metaplasia or hyperplasia. So students have confusion, all have shia. So students have confusion. So yes, Pooja, you are absolutely right. Anyone else apart from Pooja wants to answer it? So what is lack of differentiation known as? Yes, Swati, Ashwajit, you all are right. It is anaplasia. Anaplasia is the lack of differentiation. The 10 features, you already know. That is that is definition of lack of differentiation or anaplasia. Yes, it is A, right. That is the next question. Now the question is tricky. I am warning you. I am warning you. Swati, Pooja, Ashwajit, I am warning you. The question is tricky. Don't rush. Read it and tell me the correct answer. So reversible loss of polarity. Two things I am asking. Loss of polarity with abnormality in shape and size. That is pleomorphism. Reversible loss of polarity and pleomorphism is known as metaplasia, dysplasia, hyperplasia or anaplasia. Now let me see what you people are saying. Let me see. I am waiting for your answers. I can see your answers in the chat box. Please tell me what is the answer. Now the clinch in the question is on reversible. So reversible ko mind karna hai. That's why I have marked it with red. So reversible ko mind karna hai. So Pooja, Swati, very good. Well done. You all are right. Both of you are right. Maine agar reversible pucha hai. Loss of polarity, all those 10 features which I have enumerated, loss of polarity, pleomorphism, hypertromatia, giant cells, mitosis, wo dysplasia mein bhi hote hai, wo anaplasia mein bhi hote hai. The only difference, you will say ma'am 10, 10 ki 10 cheese in dysplasia mein bhi hai, 10 ki 10 cheese in anaplasia mein bhi hai, to how we will differentiate? Dysplasia is reversible, 
anaplasia is irreversible that is the thing dysplasia is pre malignant anaplasia is itself malignant itself malignant so here question mein aapko do cheeze puchi hai un 10 mein se loss of polarity and pleomorphism lekin reversible so answer will be dysplasia yes ashwaji agar now listen all all the students pooja swati ashwaji instead of reversible in the question i make a change i am telling you irreversible then what will be your answer a b c d option same same question but reversible ki jagah irreversible reversible ki jagah irreversible kar diya maine reversible ki jagah maine question mein a little bit change i have done a change in the question instead of reversible i am i am i am keeping it as irreversible so the same question same options what will be your answer now now write down yes pooja now your answer will be anaplasia so you got it absolutely right yes you all are right now the answer in that scenario will be anaplasia so here the answer is b because reversible is asked so you got my point you got my point okay okay so let me move ahead i'm moving ahead okay so let me come to the next and the fifth feature which differentiate benign tumor from malignant so till now we have studied these four features based on which we have differentiated benign tumor from malignant tumor based on rate growth rate based on clinical features based on cross based on 10 microscopic features we have differentiated but all of them are rough rather microscopic features se bhi in charon mein best kon hai microscopic feature which differentiated which differentiate benign from malignant rate of growth clinical features and gross are rough criteria but the main is microscopy lekin microscopy se bhi zyada main feature hai this feature that definitely that is the surest sign that is the surest sign which sign which differentiated benign tumor from a malignant tumor the best sign is metastasis now there are two two ways of spread of tumor let me explain you the two ways one is local invasion one is distant distant invasion let me draw a human body here okay a rough sketch diagram of a human body this is a human body just suppose this human body okay let me draw it okay so this is the mouth this is the esophagus this is the stomach and this is the intestine this is normal human body just suppose right and the patient is having a tumor in the stomach right now i don't know whether it is a benign tumor or malignant but yeah there is a tumor in the stomach this is the liver this is the spleen this is the pancreas these are the lungs this is the heart this is the brain other organs are all, also there so many organs are there these are the bones you can see it is a sketch diagram huh? don't go in details just to explain you so the tumor is in the stomach just for suppose just for suppose now it can be benign it can be malignant right or not it can be benign it can be malignant now malignant malignant tumors let me talk about just suppose it is a malignant tumor so it will spread by two ways two ways number one is local invasion local invasion and number two is distant distant invasion or this local spread or distant spread local invasion local spread or local spread is known as invasion and distant spread is known as metastasis so you should understand the difference between invasion and metastasis invasion of a local spread hai aur metastasis of a distant spread hai listen this tumor this tumor ye jo aapka tumor hai stomach mein se bad bad ke stomach mein se bahar aake continuity mein pancreas ko involve kar le ya continuity mein spleen ko involve kar le intestine ko involve kar le uh, liver ko involve kar le but it is continuous continuous so it is it is known as local local spread local spread or invasion it is invading in other organs so that is local but it, the, the thing here is continuity it is in continuity so from one organ to another it is going but in continuity from stomach stomach ke paas mein pancreas hai it will involve pancreas uske paas mein spleen hai it will involve spleen spleen ke paas mein yahan pe liver hai it will involves liver it will go in intestine so likewise it is involving multiple organs but in continuity so it is known as local spread or invasion give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up now imagine a situation the same tumor is going this is the blood vessel the tumor cells are going in the blood vessel these are the tumor cells they are going in blood vessels or lymphatic from the blood vessels or lymphatic the tube few of the tumor cells from the blood it reaches the brain and they are causing a tumor in brain now there is no continuity between the stomach and the brain there is no continuity na no? stomach yahan pe hai brain yahan pe there is no continuity the the spread is via blood or lymphatic blood now this is known as distant spread this is known as metastasis not only in brain in, in the bones also it can occur it can occur in the muscle bone it can occur in the lungs it can occur in the brain but discontinuous it is discontinuous it is discontinuous it is known as distant spread or metastasis give me a thumbs up have you got the difference between local spread and distant spread local spread is continuous and distant spread is discontinuous discontinuous from the primary tumor so main tumor is stomach tumor which is known as primary tumor प्राइमरी न्यू ट्यूमर के कंटिन्यूएशन में हो रहा है कि डिसकंटिन्यूएशन में हो रहा है कंटिन्यूएशन में हो रहा है तो उसे कहेंगे लोकल स्प्रेड दैट इज इनवेजन और डिसकंटिन्यूएशन में हो रहा है वाया ब्लड और लिम्फेटिक्स 
तो उसे कहेंगे डिस्टेंस स्प्रेड और मेटा स्ट्रक्चर गिव मी अम्स अप फर्स्ट फर्स्ट एवरी वन दो जितने लोग होते हैं both of these features that is local spread or distance spread they are absent in benign and both of them are present in malignant now it is a myth of the student it is a confusion to the students ki aapka invasion aur local spread benign mein hota hai nahi benign mein inme se kuch bhi nahi hota hai benign tumor mein isme kuch bhi nahi hota hai benign tumor mein isme kuch bhi nahi hota hai let me draw two human bodies so this is a human body this is a human body and this is also a human body this is also a human body let me draw stomach in each of them so this is the stomach in each of them this is the stomach in each of them right so this is a tumor in the stomach this is also a tumor in the stomach now this is a benign tumor and this is a malignant tumor listen benign tumor will enlarge in size enlarge in size enlarge but it will not spread to other organ it will compress bada ho ke compress karega दबाएगा दूसरे ऑर्गन्स को बट इट विल नॉट इनवेड इट विल नॉट गो इनसाइड अदर ऑर्गन्स इफ इट इज बिनाइन और डिस्टेंट का तो सवाल ही नहीं होता इट विल नॉट गो इन ब्लड वेसल्स एंड अदर ऑर्गन्स नो सो नो इनवेजन नो मेटास्टासिस बिनाइन ट्यूमर बट इफ इट इज अ मैलिग्नेंट ट्यूमर इट विल स्प्रेड टू अदर ऑर्गन्स इन कंटिन्यूटी इन कंटिन्यूटी इट विल गो टू पैंक्रियास लीवर स्पलीन इंटेस्टाइन सो इट विल शो लोकल इनवेजन एंड इट विल गो टू द ब्लड वेसल्स वाया ब्लड वेसल टू द ब्रेन टू द बोन्स टू द लंग्स सो इट विल शो मेटास्टासिस आल्सो so it is how we differentiate that is the surest sign ab sabse sure sign kya ho gaya to differentiate it benign and malignant tumor sabse sure sign hai metastasis metastasis sabse sure sign hai if metastasis is present imagine a patient is coming to your clinic he is saying he is having multiple pumpings you have done a ct scan or pet ct scan so tumor is at multiple location one of the tumor is primary ye aapka primary ho gaya and rest all the tumors are known as secondary which have arise from the primary so the brain the bone the lung so multiple liver it can happen so metastasis that is multiple secondaries so no no need of doing biopsy no need of doing anything it is malignant wo to malignant hi hai na so that is the surest sign of malignancy is metastasis second surest sign is invasion now imagine a patient is coming to you having a primary tumor in the stomach but in continuity it is spreading to pancreas liver spleen also in continuity so invasion is there so that is the second surest sign so out of these most surest sign the first surest sign it is a mcq ha huh? most surest sign is metastasis first first sign most surest pathogenic feature which differentiate benign and malignant without any confusion is metastasis the second is local invasion second is local invasion based on local invasion you can see whether it is benign or malignant both these features are present in malignant both these features are absent in benign and uske baad kuch hai to microscopy baki sab rough criteria hai to differentiate benign and malignant give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up now i will give you the details of local invasion kaise hota hai i will give you the details metastasis kaise hota hai local invasion itna important nahi hai but metastasis zyada important hai from university point of view university exams point of view everyone give me a thumbs up should i proceed ahead should i tell you the steps of metastasis very very easy and very very important right so local local invasion and distant invasion distant invasion is metastasis both of them are features of malignancy both of them are absent in benign both of them are present in malignancy as i have told you so here it is a best diagram showing so see see this is the main tumor here everyone see this is the primary tumor it is present in a tissue in that tissue only it is invading invading and in continuity it is going to another tissue so that is invasion invasion but if it is going in blood from blood it is going to another tumor so it is known as metastasis i will tell you the step i will tell you so local invasion to theek hai benign tumor mein absent hota hai malignant mein present hota hai i am teaching you the steps of metastasis how metastasis takes place metastasis so what is the definition of metastasis metastasis pe five mark question aata hai for your kind information those who don't know metastasis is a five star important topic make five star over it it is the most important topic which comes in university exam very 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 frequently it is asked in the university exam very frequently write a short note on metastasis write a long note on metastasis metastasis pe 3 mark to aayega hi aayega 3 mark or 5 mark question comes in metastasis so you should be able to write that way right so first define metastasis what is the definition of metastasis metastasis is distant spread so the tumor it is the spread of the tumor in discontinuous secondary tumors discontinuous multiple secondary tumors are formed multiple tumor masses are formed at the site of the lodgement which is away from the primary site just suppose primary site is stomach so multiple secondary tumors are formed either in the brain in the lymph node in the liver in the 
bone multiple secondary masses which are discontinuous from the primary so that is the definition of the metastasis given in drawbills so you should be able to understand the definition if you understand the definition you can learn it well if you don't understand it mugging is very difficult isko mug up kaise karoge you will forget it but once you understand it thoda bahut words idhar udhar karke you can you can make it out give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up listen listen what i have told you what i have told you i have told you benign tumors and malignant tumors so metastasis kiska feature hai metastasis is absent in all benign tumors and present in all malignant tumors except two malignant tumors two malignant tumors which are malignant but they do not show metastasis name those two malignant tumors so there are two exceptions two exceptions benign tumor do not metastasize malignant tumor metastasize all malignant tumor metastasize except two brain may cns may glioma glioma or skin may basal cell carcinoma also known as rodent rodent tumor rodent ulcer so basal cell carcinoma of the skin and glioma of the brain these two are malignant tumors so ideally they should do metastasis but that do not do metastasis learn these two exceptions except these two all malignant tumor show have a tendency of metastasis they can go to stage 4 they can go to stage 4 any tumor tumor of the brain tumor of the skin tumor eye nose ear breast heart blood any tumor can show metastasis except these two if it is malignant if it is malignant it is the most surest or most reliable feature of a malignant tumor which differentiated from benign tumor give me a thumbs up now how metastasis takes place what are the roots of the metastasis what are the roots of the metastasis from one organ to another organ you have to spread the tumor no so this is a human body this is a tumor just suppose this is the primary tumor in the stomach again i am saying this is the primary tumor it has to spread to other organs discontinuously so i can do it three ways number one via blood vessel this is a blood vessel number two via lymphatic vessel this is a lymphatic vessel and number three via via the peritoneal cavity via the cavity listen 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 these tumor cells can go to the blood and via blood it can spread to any organ these tumor cells can go to the lymphatic by lymphatic it can go to any organ discontinuous and these tumor cells can be shed in the abdominal cavity freely from abdominal cavity it can go to the peritoneal cavity and it can spread to any organ give me a thumbs up so there are three ways there are three ways if it is spreading via blood vessel it is known as hematogenous route if it is spreading via lymphatic it is known as lymphatic route and if it is spreading via cavity it is known as transthelomic route so there are three routes please remember lymphatic route hematogenous route that is blood and transthelomic transthelomic mein cavity ke alawa aur bhi kuch aayega main batati hu so i will i will discuss all three routes one by one so in metastasis first write the definition of metastasis then write that benign tumors do not show metastasis malignant tumors show metastasis except to write down the exceptions and it is the surest sign which differentiate benign and malignant uske baad write the routes and explain one by one so it will be a five mark question give me a thumbs up Give me a thumbs up. Have you got it, Swati, Pooja, Ashwajit? Have you got it? Give me a thumbs up. So that is the roots of metastasis. So there are three roots, as I have told you: lymphatic, hematogenous, and transthelomic. So I will explain you one by one all three. So can you see here? This is the tumor. This is the tumor here. It is cancer cells, tumor cells. Now they want to spread to other organs. So they can go via blood. So this is blood. They can go via lymphatics, lymphatics, and here. they can directly shed into the cavity that is strong synomic so these are the three roots here also it is shown these are the tumor cells going via blood these are the tumor cells going via lymphatic and these are the tumor cells they are directly shed into the cavities and they can go so which tumor will go with by which route which tumor will go so as i told you tumors are of two type carcinoma and sarcoma if it is arising from epithelial cells it is carcinoma if it is arising from mesenchymal cells it is sarcoma so carcinomas prefer lymphatic route to go from one organ to another and sarcomas prefer blood route blood vessel hematogenous route for going one organ to another again very important carcinoma spread by lymphatic sarcoma spread by hematogenous so learn like this c l c l s h learn c l s h that is the mnemonic carcinoma lymphatic sarcoma hematogenous so you will never forget it is very important for mcqs also for viva also for your general knowledge also have you got it so there are three routes so carcinomas and sarcomas have you got it carcinomas and sarcomas so here carcinoma spread by lymphatic routes and sarcoma spread by hematogenous route usually transthelomic rare route hai, but it can happen so there are three routes let me talk about these three routes one by one let me talk about the steps in lymphatic 
then the steps in hematogenous, then the steps in transthelomic. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. Have you got it? Okay. So lymphatic spread. Lymphatic spread, as I have told you, it is more common for carcinoma. So lymphatic roots say how tumor go from one uh, organ to another. Okay. How? So what is the lymphatic root? Just suppose this is a, your tumor. This is your primary tumor, main tumor. It is in the stomach or any organ. This is the primary tumor. Now these are the lymphatics. Let me draw. What is the lymphatic? Lymphatic is like blood vessel only. Do you know what is the blood vessel? It is lined by the endothelial cell. So lymphatics are also lined by endothelial cell. It is a, it is like a hollow pipe, lymphatic vessel. But in between there are lymph nodes. This is lymph node, again lymphatic. This is lymph node, again lymphatic. So this is a lymphatic vessel, lymphatic vessel. In between there are lymph nodes. In between there are lymph nodes. Have you got it? Now this is the primary tumor. These are the cells in the primary tumor. So cells in the primary tumor and this is another organ another organ it can be brain it can be any any organ right so the tumor cells want to go from one organ to another via lymphatic so there are two ways there are two ways either they go from the lumen the tumor cells or they go from the lining they go from the lining lining pe chipak ke jayenge ya fir iske lumen ke andar se jayenge so agar wo lining pe chipak ke ja rahe hain so these are known as lymphatic permeation or lumen mein se ja rahe hain so these are known as lymphatic emboli so the both both of these are shown here you can see this is lymphatic emboli. They are going from inside and here it is going through lining. It is known as lymphatic permeation. So the two ways are there. Give me a thumbs up. What is the pattern of involvement? Listen, as I have told you, as I have told you, aapko, this is a lymphatic vessel, this is a lymph node. This is a lymphatic vessel. So in between there are lymph nodes. So whenever tumor cells are traveling here in a lymphatic vessel, the lymph node which are coming in between, they will be involved. They will become positive. Again, they will go ahead. Again, the next lymph node will be involved. So, lymph nodes will be involved in sequence. Whatever lymph nodes are coming in the root, they will be the regional lymph nodes. They will be involved in sequence. The first lymph node which is involved is known as sentinel lymph node. Sentinel lymph node, very important. So, this is the main tumor. So, this is when it is going through lymphatic. The first lymph node which is involved, it is known as sentinel lymph node. Give me a thumbs up. That is known as sentinel lymph node. So that is the thing. So here you can see this can be the sentinel lymph node. This can be the sentinel lymph node. This is the main tumor. Give me a thumbs up. That is lymphatic. That is lymphatics. Okay. Okay. Let me go. So that was about lymphatic spread. Coming to the hematogenous spread now. The second type of spread is hematogenous spread. Hematogenous. This is most important. Hematogenous blood spread. So sarcoma spread by hematogenous spread. Hematogenous spread is for sarcomas. Listen. For sarcomas. Now, hematogenous may, uh, the uh, blood vessels get through, no? it is through blood vessels. Blood vessels may we have arteries also, we have vein also. So, via which route tumors prefer to go? Via artery or via vein? Let me draw a diagram. This is tumor, primary tumor. Now, this is the artery, you can see, of this organ. And this is the vein of this organ. This is the vein. This is the vein. This is the artery. Now, tumor cells, these are the tumor cells. Tumor cells will go from one organ to another. They prefer via artery or via vein. Kis ke through jayenge? Through, they prefer via vein. Why? Why vein is preferred as compared to artery? Because vein have thin wall. Arteries have thick wall. So tumor cells have to cross a thin wall. Thoda sa resistance hai. So they will prefer through veins. Give me a thumbs up if you got it. So these all are one liners. Veins are more commonly involved as compared to arteries because they have thinner walls. So in contrast, arteries have thicker walls. Give me a thumbs up. Have you got it? That is the thing. That is the thing. So veins ke through jayenge. They will go to the veins. Now, which organs they will go? Most commonly, which organs they will go? This is a primary tumor and they are going through veins, not via arteries. So, veins. So, in body, we have multiple organs, 100 of organs. Now, via veins, most commonly, they will go either, they will go either to the lungs or to the liver. Lung or liver mein hi jayenge. Why? Vein ke through lung or liver mein hi jayenge. Why? So, why? I am asking you why? So, lung and liver are the, are the most common organ involved via blood route, via hematogenous route, via venous route. Why? Liver and lung. Why? Do, does anyone know the answer? Why? Does anyone know the answer of why? Pahle lung ka batao, baad mein liver ka batao. Pahle lung ka batao. Who will tell me the answer of the lung? All the veins of the body, all the veins, any vein of the body, any vein, any vein, all the veins of the body open in superior, inferior vena cava, SVC, IVC, agreed or not agreed? So, if tumors, tumor cells are present in any of the vein, any of the vein of any organ, the tumor cell will come in SVC or IVC. Vein me se kaha jayenge? SVC, IVC. SVC, IVC khulta kaha pe hai? SVC, IVC open in right side of the heart. Right auricle. Right auricle, then right ventricle. So, tumor cells will go to right auricle. From right auricle, they will go to right ventricle. 
from right ventricle they will go to the lung they will go to the lung so these tumors sir they will go to right auricle right ventricle they will go to the lung and they will cause metastasis in the lung they will cause metastasis so lungs are the most common organ involved this is how this is this is known as cowl superior inferior cowl blood flow give me a thumbs up that is the cowl yes puja i am coming on portal also have you got it this is cowl cowl ka reason samajh mein aaya now coming on portal why liver is involved lungs to samajh mein aa gaya lung ka reason hai cowl blood flow superior inferior vena cava they will take it to the right side of the heart and from the right side of the heart it will go to the lung now what is the reason for the liver liver what about git just a second let me draw git so this is the git can you see this is entire git stomach esophagus stomach and intestine esophagus stomach and intestine the veins of esophagus stomach intestine first go to the liver this is known as portal blood portal blood they first go to the liver from liver they will go to the heart they do not directly go to the heart as we see ivc so you know what is portal blood so if any tumor is present in git either in esophagus or in stomach or in intestine small intestine large intestine so first it will go via veins to the liver and it will produce a metastasis in the liver so this is how liver is involved in git tumors if you have tumor if the patient have tumor in git organ either in esophagus or stomach or intestine any git organ they have propensity of having metastasis in the liver because of portal blood flow because of the portal vein so that is the portal so portal and cowl portal area leads to liver metastasis cowl area leads to lung metastasis so liver and lung are the most common organs involved do you know so that is the thing give me a thumbs up so most common organ involved in metastasis is liver second most common is lung so lung it is also important liver followed by lung So most common is liver followed by lung so that is the reason everyone give me a thumbs up so you can see these are the metastases here metastatic masses in the liver the entire liver is studded with multiple metastatic masses you can see in the liver in the lungs in the brain in the bone in the kidney in the adrenal metastases can occur anywhere anywhere should i come i have told you this also all malignant tumor shows metastases except to the gliomas of the cns and basal cell carcinoma or rodent ulcer of the skin these two are malignant tumors but they do not show metastasis they do not show metastasis so that was about hematogenous spread lymphatic spread ho gaya hematogenous ho gaya hematogenous ki mujhe steps batani hai i will tell you eight steps of hematogenous later on let me tell you transcelomic route the third route is the transcelomic route what do you mean by transcelomic route now transcelomic route spread spread by the body cavity spread by csf and spread by implantation i have to draw a diagram so this is the human body in the human body there is a tumor <coughs> anywhere just suppose in the stomach as usual so this is the tumor in the stomach so the tumor cells will be shed into the abdominal cavity from abdominal cavity they will involve to the other organs so this is transcelomic route number 1 just suppose the tumor is in the brain this is the brain and tumor is in the brain from the brain the tumor will go in the csf It, it in the arachnoid space there is csf now so tumor cells are going to the csf and from csf it is going to the spinal cord and they are involving spinal cord so this is also transcelomic route this is also transcelomic route so transcelomic route is either body cavity or through csf number 2 and tc ek aur cheez hai third thing just suppose uh, this is the scalpel of a surgeon surgeon is doing surgery on this patient you are a surgeon you are doing surgery on this patient so you are using a scalpel here you are cutting the tumor so this is the scalpel which is used so scalpel contains the tumor cells scalpel have the tumor cells because you have done the surgery this patient is out of the ot now you are taking another patient in the ot and you have not sterilized the scalpel so you are using the same scalpel without sterilization to another patient so these tumor cells can be implanted from one 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 patient to another it rarely 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 happen but yeah it is a root so i have to enumerate it so it is known as implantation the third root so that is the thing so there are three things in transcelomic spread what are the three things in transcelomic spread number one body cavities number two csf number three implantation from one patient to another via using same scalpel same scalpel have you got it give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up so body cavities ka best example hai crook and burg tumor what is crook and burg tumor there is a primary tumor in the stomach see this is stomach primary tumor in the stomach the tumor cells are shed in the abdominal cavity from abdominal cavity they will come to the peritoneal cavity in the peritoneal cavity they involve the ovaries both ovaries bilateral ovaries not only one they will involve bilateral ovaries so tumor with stomach tumor with bilateral ovary metastasis this is primary these two are secondary it is known as crook and burg crook and burg uh crook and burg tumor crook and burg patient have three tumors one in stomach two in ovaries so the two ovaries spread is through transcelomic route this route is transcelomic see this diagram this is stomach beautiful diagram 
see this is stomach we see this is stomach and these are the two ovaries so patient have three tumors one in stomach and two in ovaries one is primary two is secondary the same diagram the two ovaries are enlarged this is uterus huh? uterus is normal but the two ovaries have tumor in that along with the stomach that is known as krukenberg triad krukenberg mein teen tumor honge krukenberg what is krukenberg krukenberg have carcinoma of the stomach going to both ovaries so total three tumors the example of transthelomic the best example cavity wala dusra csf wala csf so any tumor in the brain in the brain can go in the spinal cord via csf or spinal cord can come to the brain via csf so that is the thing third is implantation that is surgeon scalpel as i have told you if you are using same scalpel same needles of or same sutures of a patient which have a uh, tumor and to another patient you you can do the implantation so that is the thing so i have given you a gross overview view of all three roots give me a thumbs up first first give me a thumbs up do you know what is lymphatic root carcinoma spread by lymphatic root do you know what is hematogenous root sarcoma spread by hematogenous root do you know what is transthelomic root there are three ways of transthelomic root cavities csf and implantation so do you know the details of it can you write a note on that now i will tell you the more details of hematogenous root the steps the exact steps of hematogenous steps mein ek ek bataungi hematogenous ke eight steps hain 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 you have to enumerate the eight steps so how step by step it is occurring so mechanism of hematogenous root there are eight steps can you write a short note lymphatic root mein kya kya important hai the sentinel lymph node hematogenous root mein you know transthelomic mein then never forget krukenberg the example is krukenberg so the my notes are sufficient for university exam you can you can take you can ask for the notes i can give you the notes on the telegram or whatsapp wherever you are available i can share these ppt with you and just read by notes if you if you if you are in second drop and your university exams are one or two months apart so don't read robin now and if you have just entered the second drop and you have the entire year after watching my lectures just read robin but if you don't have time my notes are more than sufficient for university exam if in your university exam if you write from my notes that is my guarantee you can pass with distinction you can pass with distinction my notes are that way sufficient give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up okay so swati on which group of whatsapp you are available i really don't know you please ask me in that group i will definitely share there if if you are there on whatsapp or if you if you are available there so please ask me there tag me there ask me there so i will wherever you are available please ask for the notes with specific topic notes of this topic ma'am please share the ppt please share the pdf so you know i am having various channels so i really forget so which notes have to be uploaded where so you just ask me i will definitely do that i will definitely do that okay lesson so let me proceed ahead let me let me tell you the eight steps let me tell you the eight steps of hematogenous root hematogenous root these are the eight steps the diagram is from harsh mohan same diagram from robins also first i will explain from harsh mohan then the same diagram from robins let me show you robins ka bhi hai mere paas this diagram from robins all eight steps in one diagram so i will show you both diagrams whatever you find good you can write in your exam draw in your exam so there are eight steps i will show you all eight steps how hematogenous root say tumor spread from one organ to another primary tumor to secondary tumor via blood vessel via blood vessel via hematogenous root how it occurs so there are exactly eight steps so see this is the tumor you can see this is the tumor this is a primary tumor you can see this is a primary tumor these are the tumor cells can you see these are the tumor cells 1 2 3 4 5 there are many tumor cells so the first step some of these tumor cells not all they become aggressive they will do the metastasis they will go to the other organ they will they will form a aggressive clone they will show angiogenesis they will form aggressive clone number 1 number 1 number 1 have you got it so that is aggressiveness cloning the uh, tumor so just suppose this is tumor these are the cells so out of all these cells just for say these two three cells will form a clone that is known as heterogeneity they will become more aggressive than rest of the tumor cells so that is the first step clonal proliferation clonal aggressiveness and angiogenesis first step number 2 these cells which become aggressive they will lose from rest of the cell because they have to go in the blood vessel now they will lose they will lose from rest of the cell so the second step is loosening they will lose they will lose from other cells so again i have to draw this is a tumor these are the tumor cells inside the tumor this is primary tumor main tumor primary tumor as i have told you some of the cells just for say these three four cells become aggressive they are forming a clone they are showing heterogeneity now they will lose from each other and other cells so that they can enter in a blood vessel 
दे विल एंटर इन अ ब्लड वेसल आफ्टर लूजनिंग तो लूजनिंग कैसे होगी लूजनिंग के लिए ग्लू क्या होता है तो चिपका के किसने रखा है हु हैज डन द स्टिकिंग स्टिकिंग कैसे है एक दूसरे से व्हाई दे आर एडवर्ट टू ईच अदर बिकॉज ऑफ ई कैटरन ई कैटरन इज द ग्लू इट इज द गम इट इज द ग्लू व्हिच इज स्टिकिंग वन सेल टू अनदर सो दीस सेल विल लूज ई कैटरन दे विल लूज दे विल कॉज द इनएक्टिवेशन और लूजिंग ऑफ ई कैटरन फ्रॉम देम सो दैट दे विल लूज फ्रॉम ईच अदर हैव यू गॉट इट सो द सेकंड स्टेप इज लूजनिंग बिकॉज ऑफ लॉस ऑफ ई कैटरन लर्न दिस ई कैटरन ई कैटरन का वन मार्क क्वेश्चन आता है how losing take place so that is the step 2 so see this is the primary tumor everyone see here this is the primary tumor i will show you eight steps here in this diagram only the first two steps in this diagram so this is the primary tumor so these are the cells in primary tumor 1 2 3 these three four cells become they become aggressive so they form a clone which is aggressive clone that is known as heterogeneity they are separating from rest of the tumor heterogeneity number second they will lose from rest of the tumor loosening by loss of e cadherin give me a thumbs up by loss of first of all thumbs up dete jao so that is loss of e cadherin second step now third step they have to enter a blood vessel this is a blood vessel this is a blood vessel this is the endothelial lining of the blood vessel but they cannot directly jump from the tumor to the blood vessel in between the two the yellow colored tissue is the extracellular matrix ecm extracellular matrix so first tumor cell have to come from the primary tumor after loosening they have to enter in extracellular matrix before entering in the blood vessel so the third step the third step tumor cell ecm interaction the tumor cell will interact with ecm that is extracellular matrix the yellow color tissue give me a thumbs up so tumor cell ecm interaction so there are receptors on the surface of the tumor cell which will interact with the collagen of the ecm ecm kya ka bana hai ecm bana hai laminin fibronectin vitronectin collagen so tumor cells have receptor for all of these so tumor cell will enter in the ecm the yellow color tissue can you appreciate this yellow color tissue jiske andar ye uh, the yellow color tissue this yellow color tissue the ecm extracellular matrix jiske andar these tumor cells are entering so this ecm is made up of collagen uh, laminin fibronectin so tumor cells have receptors for them tumor cell will develop the receptor and they will enter the ecm via that receptor so that is the third step tumor cell ecm interaction what was the first step aggressive clone formation what was the second step loosening via loss of e cadherin what is the third step third step tumor cell ecm interaction via forming receptors for collagen laminin fibronectin vibronectin that is the thing the fourth thing they will degrade they will degrade the ecm and uske andar ghusta jayega they just interact yahan pe first interact karega interact karke it will invade inside by degrading the ecm so the fourth step is degradation of the ecm give me a thumbs up degradation ecm degrade karne ke liye there are enzymes inside the tumor cells that is collagenase gelatinase collagenase that will split the collagen gelatinase that will split the gelatin so these are matrix degrading enzymes these are known as metalloproteinase so tumor cell will form such enzymes so that they can degrade the ecm and they can enter inside the ecm so that is the fourth step fourth step is degradation of the ecm now comes the fifth step fifth step entry of tumor cell into the lumen of the blood vessel can you see tumor cells are entering in the lumen of the blood vessel so the fifth step is entry of tumor cell into the lumen lumen of the blood vessel so they require a cytokine there for moving pair kya hai this is the tumor cell now and this is the blood vessel so how tumor cell will enter inside it tumor cell will require a motility factor that is autocrine motility factor it will be in the form of the you know pseudopods and tumor cell will enter inside the blood vessel that is autocrine motility factor so the fifth step is entry of tumor cell into the lumen of the blood vessel after going inside now as soon as tumor cell goes inside now imagine okay so this is a tumor these are the tumor cells these are the tumor cells this is a blood vessel now and this is ecm this is ecm this is all ecm till now who will numerate the steps abhi tak maine 6 steps bataye who will tell me the steps so the first step the first step is loosening Lo, uh, the, no, not losing. The first step is formation of aggressive clone. Some of the tumor cells in the primary tumor they will form a aggressive clone that is known as heterogeneity. That is the first step. Second step is loosening. They will lose from each other and rest of the tissue by loss of e cadherin. So here word important is e cadherin. They will lose. The third they will interact with ECM. They will interact with ECM via receptors. The receptors are for collagen, for laminin, for gelatin receptors. पहले उनसे रिसेक्ट पहले उनसे मेल मिलाप करेंगे फिर उन्हीं को तोड़ेंगे फिर उन्हीं को तोड़ेंगे द फोर्थ स्टेप इज डिग्रेडेशन ऑफ ईसीएम आफ्टर इंटरेक्शन दे विल डिग्रेड द ईसीएम विद द हेल्प ऑफ एंजाइम्स दे हैव कोलेजिनेस 
they have gelatinase they have natalloproteinase so those enzyme will degrade it so tumor cells will enter inside the ecm first they will interact with ecm junction pe and after interacting they will enter inside the ecm after ecm they will enter inside the blood vessel for entering inside the blood vessel entry the fifth step they require uh, autocrine motility factor amf autocrine motility factor after entering now the next step why i have drawn this diagram blood uh, blood contains rbc wbc and platelets so wbc kill the foreign material tumor cells are foreign why tumor cells are not killed by the wbc as soon as it is entering the blood vessel the wbc should kill the tumor cell because it is foreign why why it is not killing it is not killing why why because on entering in the blood vessel this is a tumor cell tumor cells are very smart huh? they are very smart they will cover themselves with rbcs and platelet wo apne aap ko cover kar lenge and they will form a thrombus they will form a thrombus so that wbc cannot identify them they are hidden they are like terrorists wo chhup ke jayenge apne aap ko pura coverage bana ke cover kar lenge with rbc and platelet they form a thrombus so the next step is formation of the thrombus thrombus formation can you see please appreciate here please appreciate these are the tumor cells and they are covered by rbc please see the rbc and platelets they covered so they are forming a thrombus so that they can escape from the wbc so thrombus formation tumor cells are now covered with circulating blood that is rbc and platelet they will form a thrombus so they, this will provide double fayda they will, will provide nourishment to the tumor cells also and they protect from the immune attack by the wbc so wbc us pe immune attack bhi nahi kar payega sixth step the seventh step <coughs> at some other organ they will come out of the blood vessel so extravasation they will come out that is extravasation of the tumor cells they will come out they will come out and after coming out they will grow in another organ that is formation of metastasis in another organ they will show mitosis so they that the lodgement in other right environment wherever they find this is the right environment for me i can do mitosis here yahan pe bahut sara khana hai nourishment hai they will lodge there and with the help of growth factors they will do the mitosis so tell me the eight steps who will tell me 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 who will tell me the eight steps who will tell me the eight steps so the first step yes swati you are right the first step is clonal clonal aggression aggressive clone formation the second is loosening by a loss of e cadran third is tumor ecm interaction they are interacting after interacting they are degrading interaction ke liye they require receptor degradation ke liye they require enzyme they have both receptors also enzyme also after that they are entering in the blood vessel that is entry of tumor cell in the blood vessel they require for this autocrine motility factor after entering they are forming a thrombus to protect themselves from wbc so thrombus formation after that they are extravasating they are coming out of the blood vessel at proper proper environment where they are finding proper and they are multiplying and forming a metastasis so these are the eight step the same step from robins so these are the eight steps from robins this was a cross sectional diagram this is a longitudinal diagram so i will explain you this also if you like this draw this in your exam if you like this draw this the eight steps are same tum ye banao ya ye banao theory is same but you have to draw the diagram these are the eight steps which i have enumerated so see so see this is a tumor primary tumor can you see this is the primary tumor some of the cells are transformed they become aggressive so some of the cells show angiogenesis they will expand clonal aggressiveness clonal expansion the first step give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up so a subclone is formed which is more aggressive then adhesion is lost they will lose from each other lose from that is adhesion is lost and they will lose from each other can you see this is extracellular matrix here the pink color wahan pe yellow dikhaya tha ye pink color extracellular matrix hai so the tumor cells are interacting with extracellular matrix and they are degrading the extracellular matrix then they are going inside it so first interaction and then degradation the extracellular matrix ecm ecm mein passage ho raha hai done that is a thing then they are going inside the blood vessel this is the blood vessel with the help of autocrine motility factor they are doing intravasation they are entering inside the blood vessel after going inside the blood vessel they are forming a thrombus with the help of the platelet cover rbc cover so thrombus formation thrombus formation so that lymphoid tissue do not if they are not forming a thrombus this is the lymphoid that will kill it that will kill it so that's why they are forming the thrombus and they are moving to another side after moving to the another side they are doing extravasation they are again coming out after coming out they are forming a metastatic deposit give me a thumbs up they are forming a metastatic deposit so these are the eight steps you can draw like this also give me a thumbs up everyone so i am done now you can see this table complete now this table is complete benign malignant tell me the differences based on growth rate tell me the differences based on clinical feature tell me the differences based on gross tell me the differences based on microscopy tell me the differences based on 
local invasion it is absent in benign present in metastasis tell me the differences based on metastasis again it is absent in benign and present in metastasis and you also also know the three roots of metastasis and mechanism of them prognosis you know now better here and worse here so the table is complete now have you got it have you got it yes nikita swati everyone so this is how you have to enumerate the differences you should know the uh, steps of the metastasis so metastasis pe yadi okay okay before that before coming on the polls one more thing i will launch the polls metastasis pe yes who will tell me who is a volunteer metastasis pe five mark question aaya to what are the headings you are going to write five mark question imagine in your exam paper 1 फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन लॉन्ग क्वेश्चन फाइव मार्क क्वेश्चन राइट एंड नोट ऑन मेटास्टेसिस मेटास्टेसिस बस एक ही क्वेश्चन है मेटास्टेसिस लॉन्ग क्वेश्चन फाइव मार्क व्हाट यू विल राइट यू शुड नो द हेडिंग्स यस निकिता स्वाति एनीवन एनीवन वांट टू पूजा एनीवन अश्वजीत हु विल टेल मी द फर्स्ट यू विल राइट द डेफिनेशन ऑफ मेटास्टेसिस सो मेटास्टेसिस इज अ स्प्रेड ऑफ ट्यूमर इट इज अ डिस्टेंट स्प्रेड इट इज डिसकंटिन्यूअस फ्रॉम द प्राइमरी मल्टीपल सेकेंडरी मासेस आर फॉर्म व्हिच आर डिस्टेंट व्हिच आर डिसकंटिन्यूअस फ्रॉम द प्राइमरी सो दैट इज द डेफिनेशन after definition you will write benign tumors do not show metastasis malignant tumor shows metastasis except two you have to write the exceptions what are the exceptions it is glioma of the brain number 1 and number 2 basal cell carcinoma of the skin these two are malignant tumor but they do not show metastasis otherwise all malignant tumors shows metastasis and benign do not show metastasis give me a thumbs up okay after definition you will write these exceptions right and it is the surest sign which differentiate benign and malignant you have to write this line also in your answer right after definition after these differences you have to write the roots of metastasis what are the roots of metastasis what are the roots so yeah roots there are three roots so lymphatic root hematogenous root and the third one transcellulomic root so lymphatic root to theek hai lymphatic root kaun karta hai so carcinoma spread by lymphatic root hematogenous root sarcoma spread by hematogenous root that you have to write in your answer and transcellulomic mein there are three options either by cavities either by csf cavity ka example hai crook and buck never forget csf and the third is implantation by the scalpel of the surgeon so you have to write them in detail so isi mein aapke three four pages to bhar gaye half page mein aap definition describe karo diagram banao और ये सब लिखो तो आपका वन पेज इसमें भर गया रूट्स को डिस्क्राइब करो तीनों रूट को डिस्क्राइब करो लिम्फेटिक में कैसे देर आर टू वेज लिम्फेटिक परमिएशन एंड लिम्फेटिक एम्बोलाइ ड्रॉ द डायग्राम हर चीज का डायग्राम चाहिए सेंटेनाइल लिम्फ नोट क्या होता है वो डिस्क्राइब करो हिमाटोजिनस रूट में वेन्स में जाएगा कि आर्टरी में अफकोर्स वेन्स में जाएगा वेन्स में क्यों जाएगा आर्टरी में क्यों नहीं जाएगा राइट द रीजन वेन्स में जाएगा तो लीवर में ज्यादा और लंग में ज्यादा कॉमन क्यों जाएगा दोनों का रीजन कावल रीजन एंड पोर्टल रीजन दोनों का डायग्राम तो इसमें एक पेज भर जाएगा ट्रांसिलोमे के तीनों डिस्क्राइब करो कैविटी के थ्रू क्रूक एंड बक का डायग्राम सी एस एफ इम्प्लांटेशन तो अभी तक थ्री टू फोर पेजेस अगर मैं तुम्हारी जगह होती तो आई कैन फिल इट बेस्ड ऑन दिस ओनली दिस ओनली थ्री टू फोर पेजेस तो भर गए उसके बाद हिमाटोजिनस स्प्रेड के हिमाटोजिनस स्प्रेड के एट स्टेप्स अलग से डिस्क्राइब करो वन वन स्टेप पे वन वन पैराग्राफ वन वन पॉइंट राइट सो एट स्टेप्स ऑफ हिमाटोजिनस रूट यू ऑलरेडी नो द एट स्टेप्स वॉट आर द एट स्टेप्स अलॉन्ग विद डायग्राम फ्रॉम द रॉबिन्स ऑल्सो from hashman also i have told you both diagrams and on each step don't just enumerate write something some detail of it some detail of it so two pages or three pages you can fill on the on this so total five to six pages ka answer complete metastasis pe with multiple diagrams you can draw the diagram for the roots you can draw the diagram for these transcellulomic root crook and buck tumor you can draw the diagrams at multiple places so draw as much as diagram in your exams give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up is it clear to you is it clear to you so that is the thing that is the thing yes so i would like to launch polls based on metastasis so you have to write your answer in the chat box those who know the answer this is the first question but you have to be fast huh the most reliable feature for a malignant tumor which differentiated from benign tumor most reliable most reliable is it local invasion which differentiate the two is it metastasis which differentiate the two is it rapid growth which differentiates the two or is it poor differentiation which differentiates the two yes pooja swati both of you are right and first to answer very good metastasis differentiate benign from malignant metastasis is absent in benign and present in malignant that is the surest sign of malignancy we always say sure be sure sure sign but we don't want this thing to happen in our patient right metastasis is stage 4 i never want any of my patient should present with this sure sign so before that i want to treat the patient i want to cure the patient metastasis is never curable it is stage 4 stage 1 2 3 is curable but stage 4 is not curable incurable so you have to give only palliative ther therapy so i no don't want any of this patient to present with metastasis but yeah it is the surest sign 
वॉट इज इन दिस क्वेश्चन आई वी मेक अ लिटिल बिट चेंज मोस्ट रिलायबल की जगह सेकेंड मोस्ट रिलायबल मैं कर दू तो आंसर क्या होगा सेम ऑप्शन वॉट इज द सेकेंड मोस्ट रिलायबल फीचर ऑफ मेलेग्नेंसी मोस्ट रिलायबल नहीं सेकेंड मोस्ट रिलायबल फर्स्ट मोस्ट रिलायबल नहीं सेकेंड मोस्ट रिलायबल पूजा यस स्वाति यस यू आर राइट पूजा so in that scenario your answer will become a so local invasion is the second most reliable criteria which differentiate the two most reliable is malignancy yes you all are right good very good so in uh, here b is the answer and second most reliable to so a is the answer this is the next question a common sense common sense common cell carcinoma spread via which route does this spread by via implantation route via hematogenous route via uh, lymphatic route or via transcellulomic route you know the routes now you know the routes तो किससे स्प्रेड होगा कौन से इससे स्प्रेड होगा स्कॉमस सेल कार्सिनोम व्हाट विल बी योर आंसर यस तो यस पूजा यू आर राइट इट इज अ कार्सिनोमा कोई भी कार्सिनोमा उसको एम एस ओ एडिनो हो पेपिलरी हो मुझे क्या करना इट इज अ कार्सिनोमा ना कार्सिनोमा स्प्रेड बाय लिम्फेटिक रूट सो आई हैव टोल्ड यू कार्सिनोमा स्प्रेड बाय लिम्फेटिक रूट एंड सार्कोमा स्प्रेड बाय हेमाटोजिनस रूट सो स्कॉमस सेल कार्सिनोमा की जगह अगर मैं कोई सा भी सार्कोमा कर दूं तो व्हाट विल बी योर आंसर सेम ऑप्शन रेबडोमायोसारोमाइब्रोसारोमाइब्रोसारोमाइब्रोसारोमाइब्रोसारोमाइब्रोसारोमाइब्रोसारोमाइब्रोसारोमाइब्रोसारोमाइब्रोसार
in depth that is the significance of pathology right okay so this is the next question in front of you yeah which is the most common site of metastasis is it lung is it bone is it liver is it brain which is the most common site of metastasis which is the most common site of metastasis yeah write your answer swati puja yes you are right swati very good yes puja you are also right so it is liver liver is the most common site of metastasis what is the second most common site of metastasis isi question mein thoda sa change kar dete hain tell me answer now what is the answer now second most common pucha to answer kya hoga same options same options yes second most common pooch lo same options to answer kya hoga yes jitendra pooja swati anyone yes pooja you are right and that scenario answer is a lung it is lung it is not visible it is lung yeah so most common is liver followed by lung that is the knowledge yes you should have question kuch bhi pooch le we know the answer you know the reasons also right okay the next question very important repeated many times many times repeat question carcinoma with no or minimal metastasis carcinoma with no or minimal metastasis the four options are in front of you is it squamous cell carcinoma basal cell carcinoma melanoma or leddig cell carcinoma so all carcinoma shows metastasis except two except two which shows no metastasis or minimal metastasis so name those two i have told you specifically the two names these are the gliomas of the cns which is not given in the option the second is basal cell carcinoma of the skin it is given in the option so i will go with b yes pooja swati so b is the correct answer i have told you several times in the lecture watch the recording from the beginning so correct answer here is b so it is repeated many 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 times have you got it so the next question now read the question you will see ma'am ye question to hame aata hi nahi hai it is from endocrinology thyroid you have not taught us this now listen it is based on common sense it is not based on thyroid per se listen which of the following helps in differentiating thyroid carcinoma from thyroid adenoma So what is thyroid carcinoma and thyroid adenoma? Adenoma is oma. Oma means benign. I have told you the beginning of the lecture, the nomenclature. Oma is a benign tumor, and carcinoma it is malignant. So basically, examiner, the author wants to ask you the difference between how you differentiate malignant tumor from a benign tumor. It is not about follicular adenoma and follicular carcinoma. It can be any two tumors which are benign and malignant. So which which of the four features differentiate a benign tumor from a malignant tumor? The most important, the surest sign here. the surest sign is metastasis but it is not given in the question. options hudel cell no limit uh, lining of the tall columnar and cubital cell vascular invasion or infreeze mitosis so what will be your answer now what will be metastasis hota to main zyada khush hoti but it is not given so second most surest sign which differentiate the two is invasion so i will go with invasion so correct answer here is c so it is common sense yes swati pooja you are absolutely right so few questions are there no students quit these questions i have seen the students who quit ma'am i have not read the thyroid now what can i do i have not read this topic follicular carcinoma adenoma so i don't have knowledge about it so i left this question no how at least try now it is based on common sense it is not the thing you should have knowledge of each and everything based on your current knowledge also you can participate so correct uh, correct answer here is c done okay the next next uh okay squamous cell carcinoma spread by this is a repeat question i guess carcinoma so not only squamous cell carcinoma any carcinoma spread by lymphatic route and any sarcoma spread by hematogenous route so here the answer is b here the answer is b instead of it if i ask rhabdomyosarcoma spread by rhabdo rhabdomyosarcoma or i ask fibrosarcoma or i ask neomyosarcoma any sarcoma spread by answer will become a so that is the thing sarcoma spread by lymphatic route carcinoma spread by hematogenous route ab tak to yaad ho gaya hoga ab tak to yaad ho gaya hoga okay the next question the next question what is the surest sign of malignancy repeat question many times many university exam repeat it almost every year surest sign of malignancy yes jitendra swati pooja ashwaji anyone yes what is the surest sign of malignancy who will tell me who will tell me fatafat fatafat yes you all are right metastasis metastasis is the short sign of malignancy okay okay all of the following malignant tumor shows metastasis except except all of the following shows metastasis except yes so it is glioma glioma do not show metastasis glioma and basal cell carcinoma rest all show metastasis so thank you very much here i have to stop now the next lecture will be about genetic regulators of malignancy that is proto oncogene tumor suppressor gene apoptosis regulating gene and dna repair gene that is the most difficult portion of entire pathology as per my knowledge i have read entire pathology and i have found this portion the most difficult one the most deadly one in the entire pathology that we will cover tomorrow so be with me let me announce my next lecture then you people can go okay so thank you very much for being with me i really enjoyed teaching you please drop your feedback in the comment box 
and next class is tomorrow tomorrow i am having again two classes one in the 9 am in the morning and second is 10 am in the morning so again i will cover new asia part 3 and part 4 part 1 2 is done today 3 and 4 so in the first lecture i will cover the genetic regulators the next lecture the diagnosis paraneoplastic syndrome tumor markers so that is the new asia will be done from my side tomorrow so please connect it with me uh, be with me tomorrow from 9 to 11 am in the morning thank you very much see you bye bye study hard